Recently, a friend of mine sent me a video of this not even six month old Bauer Impact. It sounds pretty bad, doesn't it? This is a, a 3 8 inch drive model that he uses in his auto dismantling business where he recycles VWs, and he sent it to me to see if maybe I could figure out what's wrong with it. So this is not going to be one of my normal full teardown reviews. Instead, it's going to be a diagnosis and hopefully a repair. After holding it up to my ear, it's clear that the grinding, squealing sound is coming from here inside the hammer case. You can see this has been well used. I mean, it was in a professional shop, but it does not look like it was abused. This is all held together with T10 and T15 fasteners. I should say I am not a Harbor Freight hater, but I'm definitely not a Harbor Freight fanboy either. I realize some of the things they sell are good and some of the things they sell are not so good. One thing I kind of noticed right off the bat here is there is not a lot of lubrication in this hammer case. Now that I have this open, the motor itself sounds fine. But when I'm doing that, it is not spinning this bearing here, so that could possibly be our culprit. I'll see if I can pull that out of there and find out. During, uh, looks like the assembly, these wires here were pinched and crushed. Looking at how all this is made, it looks like the hammer here is forged. These uh, gears are clearly powdered metal. On first blush here, I don't see anything obviously wrong or clearly broken. Uh, there is a good bit of wear here on the anvil. This is where it rides inside a bushing in the front of the hammer case. That's quite worn there, but uh, that wouldn't, I don't think, be causing our problem. The teeth on all these gears look fine, but again, it doesn't look like there's much lubrication in here. The way this works when you're impacting is this is spinning like this and the hammer is hitting on the anvil and it can also push past it because of this big spring the hammer can get pushed in which allows the anvil here to skip past it. There we go. Got it by grabbing it with this a little pair of smooth jawed pliers. The bearing here is a 6902 with two rubber seals. Uh, there's no brand name on it that I can see. I was expecting it would feel really gritty, but it actually feels okay. The more I feel the bearing in this, the more I think this might be the problem. It just feels like it spins a little too easily. I think it might just be worn out. So what I did is added a little bit of lubrication to the bearing here, and I'm reassembling everything uh, with some additional grease. So it's a couple days later and I wanted to update you all on what I did. So I opened up the bearing, here you can see I have the seals off, and there was not much grease in it. So I greased the bearing and sealed it back up and reinstalled it. And I also greased the hammer mechanism because it did not have enough grease. I reassembled the whole impact, tested it out, and the noise was gone. Now it sounds just so much better. But I couldn't just end the project without knowing what actually fixed it. So I opened it back up here, took the seals off the bearing again, and now that I've lubricated this and used it a little more, I can feel this bearing is a little bit gritty. So I think this was our problem all along, and the reason it's not making noise now is because that fresh grease I added is masking the noise, at least for a little while. So this needs to be replaced. And here is the replacement. Normally I get a name brand bearings off of eBay because you can find some good deals, but I was on really short notice, so I had to get something uh, that was Amazon Prime eligible. I got this from a bearing supplier. It's not a uh, high-end name brand, but it's better than the failed bearing that we have now. So I'm going to press this into the motor here, and we should be good to go. Now that I have this open again, we might as well take a quick look at some of the other parts. I was a little surprised to see this has a name brand Mabuchi motor. This is obviously a brushed motor because this is a brushed tool. You can see the brushes right there. The switch here is not exactly a name brand, it's J-Level. Uh, this is a Chinese company, but it is a company that specializes in making switches. 
On the housing here, they use the good stuff, PA6 GF30, so nylon reinforced with glass fibers. And they use a good bit of it, it's pretty stiff. This is also a complex injection molding, and they did a good job. All the details here are cleanly done. There's also another nice detail on the over molding here. Look real close and you can see those little dovetails. So the over molding isn't just put on here, it's locked into these little dovetails, which will help keep it in place. I got it all back together with the new bearing and it sounds good. So after all of that, what did we learn? Well, these have kind of a strange mix of quality parts and cost cutting. They used a name brand motor, but they used a total no-name bearing that failed after only a few months, and they didn't even put enough grease in the hammer mechanism. I don't really understand why they would cheap out on some of those details. Uh, with a few little tweaks, this could be a pretty good quality tool. I think this example shows it might not be good for professional work, but maybe you guessed that based on the price. But maybe it's okay for a do-it-yourselfer. So what do you guys think of this tool? Let me know in the comments down below. And while you're down there, hit that like button and that subscribe button. And thanks for watching.